Welcome, digital artists! I'm Gale from AI Creative Tools, and in today's video we are going to talk about style in mid-journey. I still think that this AI is the most versatile in terms of style, giving you not only the widest variety on the market, but also a bunch of tools to manage style. You will learn how to describe your style in a prompt, where to get ready-to-use styles, and also about style consistency. An important disclaimer here. In this guide, we will focus only on illustration styles. Photos can also have certain styles, but that's a topic for another guide. You'll find the link in the description as soon as it's released. We're starting with the basics, meaning your actual prompt. If you don't add anything about the style, don't be surprised that you'll get a totally random result. Let's see. As you see, totally random. So let's actually add something about the style. And here we go, much more predictable, but we can do even better. Here are some examples of popular terms which can be used as style guidance for AI. Watercolor, 3D, paper cutout, vector, outlines, pixel art, and so on. I've used the same prompt as in the beginning, changing just the style. Now let's get into more detail. When you describe the style in words, there are actually several layers of style and you might want to combine some of them to have more control over the result. Here's how I classify these layers. By technique, watercolor, oil painted, ink drawn, and others. By aesthetics, boho, gothic, fantasy. By art type, art deco, claymation, UKE, and others. Particular style, chibi, Disney cartoon, Lego figurine. Specifications, with bold outlines, symmetrical, quirky character. And by mood, atmosphere, and vibe, romantic mood, spooky vibe, adventure spirit. And we are not even touching colors in this video, though colors are also very impactful. In my opinion, color is a very intuitive area, but let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to make a short guide on it. Back to the layers of style. You can classify them in your own way, but what I'm trying to say here is that you can be very descriptive with your style. And the more you go into detail, the more personalized and repeatable your style becomes. So where is the proper place for style details in your prompt? Usually it goes at the end, right before parameters, like this. But if your prompt is very long, or if AI keeps skipping certain details, move them to the beginning. Remember, the closer a word is to the start, the more likely it is to be depicted. The start of your prompt is the prime real estate. The next thing about manual prompting is to avoid conflicting terms when describing your style. Otherwise, the AI will just not combine them well. For example, if you choose claymation, it's 3D objects made of clay, and mix it with watercolor, which is a flat paper illustration, you will not get a good result showcasing both. As you see in this example, the AI picked watercolor and skipped claymation completely, and there are two reasons for that. First, watercolor came earlier in the prompt. Second, the journey's training dataset for watercolor is much larger than for claymation, and even if you swap the order, watercolor still dominates. By the way, if you don't enjoy writing prompts, try one of our prompt builders. It's much easier to craft your prompt by simply picking what you like from pre-filled dropdowns instead of manually writing everything from scratch. As you make selections, you not only build a prompt in seconds, but also learn and get inspired. On top of that, the proper prompt structure is already prepared by us and tailored for specific tasks. Clip art, junk journal, wall art, photo, patterns, coloring pages, and many more. Perfect for beginners and a time saver for advanced users. Now let's move to inspiration. Mainly we'll cover style references and mood boards. You can also use the describe command to recreate the style of an existing image. We already have a detailed guide on that, link in description, so we'll not talk about this approach today. 
Style reference in Midjourney is managed by the SREF parameter. After SREF comes a unique number code or a link to the reference image. You can also type in SREF random to get a random style result. Just like that. First, let's explore the codes, but where to get them anyway? Before, we have to experiment on our own or rely on other people's tests. Basically, guesswork. Now, Midjourney has introduced its style library on the official website. Very handy. You can find it under the Explore tab, here on the right pick styles, and now you can browse them by random, by hot, by top of today, this week or this month. Also, you can like a certain style and then it will appear in this category. And finally, you can browse it by certain terms, like this. Here are some styles, which are actually green. And here are some watercolor-inspired styles. Okay, now let's see how to use style codes. You can actually perform the same actions from this catalog view as well as from this personalized view of the styles. You see several options here. Clicking on the style code itself or on this text icon, they actually work the same, will add the style code to your prompt field. You can also click Try Style to run your recent prompt with this style code. Like this. There's an option to like the style from here as well. And you can use multiple style codes together, allowing you to mix them. Now to the mood boards, right here. These are for your custom styles. You can add images from your local device, from the web, or from your mid-journey creations. Think of a mood board as training mid-journey for your personalized style model. In my experience, you should have at least 100 images inside to have good results from a mood board. Click on the text icon to use this mood board in a prompt. As you see, they can be combined with SREF codes, giving you even more varied results. Let's make some prompt here. And here's what we've got. Very interesting results. I guess I like this one the most. Many creators share their mood boards online, but in my opinion, this tool is most powerful when you build your own one, since only you know the inspiration behind it. And the last point of interest in our journey today is style consistency. SREF codes and mood boards already give you consistency, but there's more. You can also use style reference images. Drag an image onto the prompt area to see this menu. The middle right section is for style reference. You can add multiple images here, just like this. Your images can be sourced from your or someone else's Midjourney creations from your local device or from the web. To use web images, you should type sref manually, followed by the link. I will take one of my Pinterest images. Like this, the image will appear among other style reference images. Let's run this prompt. Very cute results, I would say. I hope you like it as well. Here's my best practice for fast consistency. Step 1. Type in a prompt with a detailed style description and run it. As always, I've just used our Clipart prompt builder to make this prompt faster. As you see for now, between these images we don't have enough file consistency. But that's totally okay, it was only step 1. Now step 2. Type in the same prompt, but change the character, and run this prompt multiple times. Step 3. 
drag the images you like into the style reference field. And ideally, that the style of all these images is very similar to each other. Let's say something like this. And step four, keep reusing the same prompt with the same text description of style together with the same reference images, just changing the objects like that. As you see, we've managed to achieve much more solid style consistency. This way, your text description and reference images work together, reinforcing each other. Using this method, you can easily create, for example, a clip art collection. You can go even further and use them to build a full mood board, which is totally worth it if you are planning to use this style often. And the last thing to learn today is style weight. It is the parameter which controls the impact of SREF style. It ranges from 0 to 1000 with a default value of 100. You can add it to your prompt like this. Style weight. Increasing the value above 100 makes style reference more impactful and vice versa. You can see here what difference it makes. In these images with style weight 10, we've almost come back to relying just on the text description of the style, which was not enough to provide consistency. Please keep in mind that style weight works only for the data under the SREF parameter. It doesn't apply to your text description of style or mood boards. Let's sum up what we've learned. Midjourney currently offers the widest style variety on the market. Styles can be controlled in three ways, manually via prompt, with SREF codes and reference images, and also through mood boards. All these methods can be used to achieve style consistency. You can control the impact of SREF styles with style weight parameter and avoid using contradictory style terms. Midjourney just tends to favor one and ignore the other. This was a big tour through Midjourney styles and I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Your support means the world to us. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.